Again, we're looking at Larry and Matt. They are the only firms that sell wheat. And now they've given us the inverse demand for wheat. They've given us Matt's constant cost. And they're asking, what is the most that Larry would be willing to spend to reduce his constant unit cost from 199 to, to 0.26 or 26 cents? And again, we're assuming that they simultaneously choose quantities. So we're gonna to have to do, this is a pretty lengthy problem. We're gonna do quite a bit of steps, but basically we're gonna find what Larry's profit is when his costs are $1.99. Then we're gonna find what Larry's profit is when his costs are 26 cents. And the difference in those profits, that's the most he'd be willing to pay to reduce his cost. So we start out, we wanna find Matt's reaction function because Matt's reaction function is not gonna change. His costs aren't changing. So we can start from profit M and we take the derivative with respect to M to QM and we can go ahead and set that equal to zero and solve for Matt's reaction function, which we find to be QM equals 47.9 minus 0.5 QL. So again, we started with Matt's because Larry's costs are changing, but Matt's reaction function is not gonna change because his costs are not changing and the inverse demand for Matt's product didn't change. So now that we've found Matt's reaction function, we can go ahead and do Larry's profit function when he has $1.99 in cost. So again, we're gonna have to do this process twice. You're gonna notice that when Larry's costs change, both of Matt's, Matt's quantity changes. Now Matt's reaction function doesn't change, but Matt's quantity does change. So just pay attention that one person's quantity helps determine the other person's quantity. That's what the reaction function was telling us. QM equaled some function of QL. So whatever QL is, if it's changing, QM will also change. So we can hit the derivative with respect to QL, set it equal to zero and find Larry's first reaction function, which we find to be 40.05 minus 0.5 QM, and that's equal to QL. Well, we know Matt's reaction function was this, so we can use substitution to solve for QL and QM. Because again, we're gonna to need to solve for QM in both cases, because if you take a look at Larry's profit function, there's a QM in that. So to find Larry's profit, we not only need to find QL, we also need to find QM. So we plug in Matt's reaction function, and now we can solve for QL in scenario one. We find QL to be 21.4667. So we need to find QM. Well, we, we know Matt's reaction function, so we can use that and plug in QL. We can solve for QM to be 37.1667. So now we have both QL and QM under scenario one, where Larry had $1.99 cost. We can plug both of these in to Larry's uh, profit function to solve for Larry's profit. Well, be careful with the algebra here, but this is just algebra from now on. And we find that in the first scenario, Larry's profit is $46.08. So now we need to do that process again with now 26 cent as his cost per unit cost, it's constant. So we're gonna take the derivative with respect to QL, set it equal to zero. And again, same process, just doing it over again with the new cost. Find a new reaction function for Larry. Matt's reaction function is the same, of course, it hasn't changed. So we're gonna use substitution and solve for QL and QM again. We find QL to be 33. We can plug that into QM and find QM to be 31.4. So now in scenario two, Larry's total profit is gonna be equal to 108.9. So this question was asking what the most he'd be willing to pay to reduce his cost from $1.99 to 26 cents. Well, under $1.99, he had $46.08 of profit. And then under 26 cent, the scenario two, he had $108.90. Well, the most Larry would be willing to spend again is that extra cash he got from the gains of the cost reduction. So the extra profit he gained from reducing his cost, well, that's the most he'd be willing to spend. Again, that's 108.9 minus 46.08, or in this case, $62.82.